Okay, now we're going to work on the valve body. There's a couple of valves that you need to pay attention. Uh, they do get hung up, not very often. You got the uh, accumulator valve. I already have all the valves out, not all of them, but most of the valves that you need to uh, pay attention to. We have the TCC isolator valve here. We have the 3-4 uh, upshift overdrive uh, valve train here. The 3-2 downshift, this spring likes to break, always check it. This is our accumulator valve and plunger. This likes to get stuck. With our, there's our spring here. And our two shift solenoid valve trains. This is the TCC valve that goes inside the pump. This is the pressure regulator valve that goes inside the pump as well. A pump filter, a boost valve. Always check that it's uh, nice and free and always go back with it nice and clean. So that's what we need to be worrying about this uh, on this valve body here. Now on the isolator valve, let's go ahead and, and start looping everything so we can start assembling our valve body here. Okay. Now I want to show you one thing here. This is off of a uh, Transgo shift kit. This is the TCC isolator valve. Now we're not going to install the shift kit in this one, but I'm going to just co show you something to, for comparison. The TCC isolator valve with the spring. This is the Transgo one. This is the original TCC isolator valve and the spring. On the early models, on the kit is supplied with a spring, TCC isolator spring, uh, to eliminate the P1870 uh, transmission component slipping trouble code. Now what we're going to do here, we're going to uh, install this valve exactly like this. And how are we going to accomplish that? Well, it's very simple. We're going to flip this valve like this. We're going to, going to install the spring first, then this plunger and then this valve last. And if you look at it, I mean, it is for well, the, the spring felt. But if you look at both valves like this, here's the spring, and let me pick up the spring. We are actually creating the same setup here by doing this. And this is going to take care of the uh, 1870. Uh, trouble code P1870 transmission component slipping. Uh, normally the TCC isolator valve gets worn up and uh, gets hung up and it gives you the P1870 and it goes right in here. Install our uh, end plug and our clip. Now in order to do this set up here we're going to have to enlarge two holes here uh, on the separated plate just like uh, they show you on the shift kit. Uh, not, uh, 96 thousandths of an inch, I have a 92 thousandths drill bit, that's what we're going to use. We're going to enlarge this hole and we're going to enlarge this hole. These two holes, this is for the TCC isolator valve and this is for the 3-2 uh, downshift uh, valve. No, this is, this is for the uh, actuator feed limit valve. Okay, so we're going to enlarge these two holes for uh, 92 thousandths of an inch. So here we have that. Now let's go ahead and install our 3-4 uh, upshift valve. This is a steel valve and sometimes the steel valves get more hung up than the, uh, the valves that, that are made from anodized aluminum. Drop them in the in the bore. I think the spring didn't go all the way in. Let's check this in here right quick. Okay. Yes. He 
you went a little bit sideways. It's two sizes, so it has to go fairly straight all the way down. Get it up a little bit. We do it again. There we go. Push it a little bit. There we go. The valve is two sizes, so uh, you got a little bit hung up there. Cock sideways a little bit. All right. Now for the other valve. Now this one here, you just got to be careful which way you put it. You install it. If you put it backwards, you're not going to have no uh, three, four upshift. We move it up a little bit. Remember, this is a steel valve. And you just want to work that valve here. See how it floats? If you feel dragging, uh, you know what to do. Get your bench buddy and work that bore. Now we're going to install our uh, end plug. And our clip. So there we have our 3 4 upshift valve. Nice and free. The TCC isolator valve. This is the actuator feed limit valve. So now we're going to install the uh, accumulator valve. And on the shift kit, uh, it asks you for some letter markings. This is a DX, and then you match the, the spring that comes from the shift kit for your servo. But we're not installing the shift kit on this one, so we're going to uh, assemble it as, it as it came in. Okay. There we have that. And now our uh, shift solenoid valves. This is a free floating valve. There went all the way down to the bore. You just want to make sure that these valves are perfectly free. This is what makes the transmission shift, and it is very important. Now we're going to change the O-rings on our solenoids. On this kit, uh, it comes with green O-rings instead of black for easy identification. Now we install our uh, clip. Now this uh, shift solenoid valve has a spring, which makes it a little bit more difficult for it to uh, get hung up. The free floating valves are easier to get uh, stuck inside their bores if there's any metal contamination in the unit. And as if you remember the way the pan looked on this one, it was contaminated. This will prevent a lot of issues. Now we're going to install the 3-2 downshift valve. Okay. And the 3-2 downshift solenoid is the white in color or the bone color and this one actually turns yellow or orange with age. Got two O-rings. Always replace the O-rings, especially on this one. This one right here is actually the end plug for the valve. So the valve just drops in there and this solenoid uh, is the one that holds that valve. You see here it wants to come out on its own. And put our clip. And this is our torque converter clutch pulse width modulated solenoid or TCC PWM for short. It's gray connector and gray body. Put our O-rings. Okay, so here you see the two O-rings. Loop it up. 
install it in the bore. Let's put our clip in. We're almost done here. Okay, so now we're going to put our, this is the forward accumulator. We're going to install the new uh, D-ring or leaf cut seal. And you have three uh, D-rings in here. You have one for the 1-2 accumulator, one for the 3-4 accumulator, and one for the forward accumulator. The forward accumulator is smaller in size and it has a yellow marking on it. Go ahead and loop it up. Gonna lube up the bore as well for easier installation. Now we put our uh, pin and we just push it in. Now we install this valve here, low control valve. We're gonna need three bolts. Remember I told you about the uh, output speed sensor bolt, these are a little longer. Two springs, the forward accumulator and the low control valve spring. I'm going to go ahead and, and install them and install the cover. Eight millimeter socket. motor or pressure control solenoid. Here's our solenoid bracket. Another bolt exactly like it. Now this one here it has two notches, two positions and on the H3 Hummers it goes up like this because the pan has a, a, a cutout or where the front drive shaft goes through, but on this one, it's going to go to the side. And the filter is also different on the H3 Hummer. To accommodate for this connector to go up, if, if you use a regular filter on a Hummer, or if actually if you put this connector up here, like the Hummer goes, uh, the filter will not uh, sit correctly on the valve body. Okay, so there we have that. And this valve body takes seven check bolts. We're gonna go ahead and uh, install new check bolts. Come in this little baggie here. It's one, two, three, four. This one did not fall in the bore. There we go. Five, six, and seven, we have one left over. This one goes on the case, okay? Now I'm gonna put a little bit of assembly lube on it to hold them together because whenever you're gonna install it on the valve, on the, on the transmission, it's gonna be upside down. So I'm gonna put some uh, assembly lube on it just to hold them in place. And then I'm gonna get it closer to the camera so that you can see all the seven locations where this uh, check balls go. Okay, seven check balls. And our manual lamp. So here we have it. We have seven check balls, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And remember this check ball, this check ball was stuck in the separator plate. And when it's stuck in separator plate, you're gonna use a one quarter drill bit uh, to enlarge the hole. And then you're gonna install this, uh, this little uh, gadget here. It has a snap ring on the rear. And if it's stuck on it, I mean, you just 
file it flush on, on both sides. And sometimes you don't even have to drill the hole because the, the check balls are one quarter in size. So it's already up to size, you just got to clean up uh, both edges and then install that. And that is, that is this here, bell body, plate, ball seal, that's what it is. There's the little snap ring and you see here, here's the snap ring. There's the snap ring and those are the little inserts that you put there, that you install there. And this is actually probably a uh, uh, Transtar part number, but this is what it is. It's a fits all VB-101. VB-101. Okay, so there we have it. Now we're going to go ahead and drill the two holes that I mentioned. I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab that drill bit. It's 96 thousandths, I have a 92 thousandths or 332. That's one. That's two. And we're going to bring it up to size. This is the third clutch. We're not going to do the second or, or the fourth uh, clutch apply. And the reason for that, we're not doing a shift kit. But we are going to do the third gear and the lock up the isolator valves. So there we have it. Make sure you blow all the debris, all the all, all the metal debris while cutting that. So there we have the valve body. Now we are going to move to assemble the pump.